Today we're going to learn about various pain groups one may experience and some of the psychological effects of having a spinal cord injury or mobility impairment. We'll hear what those with physical disabilities have experienced. Ethan Asher, a senior at Powell High School of Wyoming and my alma mater, was headed to school this past August and got too close to the edge of the highway and rolled his truck three times. He wasn't wearing a seatbelt and was ejected from the truck that was crushed like an accordion. His spinal cord was severed, his aorta was slashed, and he had a traumatic brain injury, brain bleed and swelling. The doctors on entry to the trauma center said he was the worst case of 2019 and didn't think he would make it. He was immediately life flighted to the Billings Clinic and lay in a coma for over three weeks but started to be less ventilator dependent and eventually, within a couple months, was able to move down to the Craig Spinal Rehabilitation Facility in Denver, Colorado. He is a paraplegic now and still working hard at trying to recover as much cognitive skills as possible with the horrible TBI. He has three classes left to graduate and he's taking them one at a time. There is an incredible 30-minute documentary on the faith of his family I grew up with his parents, the amazing community of Powell, and many throughout the state and actually across the nation and his football team. His team was amazing and made it to state even without him as quarterback. They played for him and the opportunity to win. Look it up on Facebook for regular updates, Ethan Strong, and check out the documentary on the course site if you have time. The reason I'm talking through types of pain today is that it's important to pay attention to and encourage clients to get medical support and to be aware of the different types of pain and what non-medical interventions can also help. Some can get acute pain with the disease or the injury where it begins suddenly and acts as a danger signal that something's really wrong. Chronic pain starts and can build up over time and continue long after the body heals. Chronic pain can occur in areas where there's normal sensation and it can occur in parts of the body where there is little or no feeling after the injury. Pain is very real and may have a great impact on daily functioning. Encourage clients to not ignore the pain and talk to a doctor and learn how to healthily manage pain. Research shows that those with lower levels of injury tend to have more pain than those with higher levels of injury to the spinal cord. Individuals injured by gunshot have more pain than persons with spinal cord injuries caused by other factors. People with spinal cord injuries experience on average higher levels of distress and lower levels of life satisfaction compared with the general population. Individual differences, however, are large, and most people with SCI adapt well to their condition. A set of psychological and social support factors is strongly related to subjective well-being. One meta-analysis of employment to psychosocial outcomes after a spinal cord injury found a moderate to large effect size for affective experiences or feelings, quality of life, and life satisfaction. So getting back to work or retraining for similar work or different work if need be is important for overall well-being. Intervention studies on cognitive behavior therapy or coping effectiveness training to improve subjective well-being show promising results but suffer from methodological weaknesses, for example, lack of randomization and small sample size. Those with spinal cord injuries do tend to have higher morbidity of mental health disorders, which means that they have two occurring mental health issues. They are also at a higher risk for suicide and alcohol and other drug addiction. Unfortunately, about 25% of the spinal cord injuries occur under drug influence, and those coping strategies continue to be used but result in more depression, anger, hopelessness, and anxiety, setting them up for suicidal risk. However, psychological resources, as defined in Peter's 2015 study as inner health protecting or health promoting potentials of a person, can help people cope better. These may include abilities, skills, and personal characteristics such as general self-efficacy, a sense of coherence, optimism, or purpose in life. Peters found some partial support for the spinal cord injury adjustment model in that purpose in life and general self-efficacy had an influence mediated by coping and appraisals on depression symptoms. Social support feeds into psychological resources. Prior studies have shown that those with more social support, both quantity and quality, had lower hopelessness and depression scores at week 18. 
That is certainly the case with Ethan. He has had tremendous social support and strong personal self-efficacy. One month into the Craig facility stay, Ethan's parents shared he had gone from whispers and nonsense words to laughter and complete answers. He had gone from laying in bed to now pushing the wheels on a wheelchair to get around. He had gone from wearing a hospital gown to putting his own shirt on. Although the family was hoping for more physical recovery in terms of walking, their daughter Peyton reminded them that his spinal cord was no longer severed, damaged, but whole, and that it was a miracle Ethan was alive. He doesn't remember all the community support and the things God has done in their state, but they repeat them so that he can hang on to them. When Ethan was told the doctors are only giving him a 2% chance of ever walking again, he replied, that was generous of them. I only need one. He has hope, as well as his family, that God's not done yet with his recovery to a new normal. The spinal cord injury adaptation model proposes that many factors contribute to the adjustment process. Biological factors such as injury level, environmental factors, including social support, and psychological factors, including psychological resources such as general self-efficacy and purpose in living, constitute predisposing or modifying factors, stressors, or resources which interact and together influence how an individual with a spinal cord injury appraises his or her injury. How the individual appraises a spinal cord injury is supposed to have an effect on the coping strategies that are being adopted to handle the challenges of living with an SCI. Finally, how the individual copes with the challenges related to spinal cord injury affects the adjustment outcomes, such as depressive symptoms. To sum it up, according to this adaptation model, the psychological resources, such as general self-efficacy and purpose in life, have an impact on depressive symptoms via someone's appraisals and coping strategies. A really insightful video, My Body Is Not Who I Am, is a collaborative of several individuals with physical disabilities, including spinal cord injuries. One of the common responses they get is low expectations, and whatever you do is good enough. Another common response is infantilization. One wheelchair user who happened to also be a model said, people talk to me like a three-year-old. They rub my head and they infantilize me. Objectification is quite common. Another woman said that some see me as less than human, less than an adult. Those with disabilities also face hypervisibility on a daily basis. One woman who lost a leg due to cancer said, some just stare at my leg as if I'm not there. The staring gets old quickly. Some think we are also asexual. There is a myth that gets perpetuated that disability causes sexuality to disappear. This is completely untrue. Those synapses are not turned off. Sometimes if one partner marries someone with a disability, they are seen erroneously as a saint or as someone doing a good deed. In the quick videos on the course site, Montserrat speaks to the sexuality myth and fears about not being able to find someone who would be interested in her. Some of the mobility aspects of life obviously change. Getting the dishes out of the cabinet no longer works, so someone in a wheelchair may put dishes all in drawers at wheelchair level. Some of those with physical disabilities and disability culture in general share that interdependence doesn't mean doing it alone. It just means get the job done. It usually takes longer to go somewhere or accomplish a physical task. Those with mobility impairments also had two very important messages for healthcare providers, including psychologists and therapists. The individual with a disability has a lot of knowledge about their disability and body. Healthcare providers should approach an appointment as an opportunity to learn and not an opportunity to deliver information. The other message is to always show total respect for the individual, no matter how severe the disability may be, remembering that they are a person first. What are the effects on the family? One individual stated that his parents were always at the beck and call of the doctors and followed the doctor's advice with many surgeries. This communicated to him that there was something wrong with him and the parents desired to just not have a disabled child. Another issue is that sometimes parents still wanna take care of their teen, young adult, or adult that has a disability and have to let them do as much as they can. What psychological tools or programs address those working through a spinal cord injury? EPACT is one such tool, a manualized psychological treatment based on cognitive behavior and positive psychological principles that address the cognitive and behavioral aspects of depression and anxiety in those who sustained a spinal cord injury. Miglarini developed EPACT and piloted it with three individuals. Five dropped out after the initial interview. 
mostly due to more medical procedures needed. EPAC consists of 10 modules that they will work through. Each module has an introduction, text, and links to outside pages, homework tasks, and links to return homework for feedback. This feasibility study indicated that the online program was acceptable and that the participants all showed some improvements in symptoms. In general, they were all able to follow the program instructions. Both of the male participants preferred to also interact by telephone contact rather than just email their homework tasks. This might indicate that therapist contact remains a motivating factor and probably needs to be a component of any online psychological treatment for this population. All three participants who completed the program indicated that they would not have sought face-to-face -face therapy for reasons of access and stigma. They all had a strong sense of independence and felt this would have been questioned if they had sought therapy. Another meta-analysis of seven studies using telecounseling with individuals who had a spinal cord injury found a moderate effect size to relieve pain and sleep issues, and 12 months later there was strong quality of life effects. There are some good options for those not wanting to face more stigma by going to a therapist in a clinic. Today we've discussed some of the psychological effects of having a spinal cord injury, some stereotypes and discriminating responses by others, and some interventions that can help build resilience in survivors of spinal cord injuries.